Hi everybody, Jo here. How are you doing? Thanks for popping in and spending a bit of time with me today. How are you? How are things? A bit chilly outside. So come on in, take your coat off, let's sit by the fire. We'll have a bit of a catch up and we're going to do another festive design. I just think these lovely, I was going to say festive, it's sort of a Christmas design, but it doesn't have to be Christmas. I think sort of a winter design. You know, there are a lot of people that have birthdays in winter time, move house in winter time, lots of things go on, weddings at winter time. And so I think it's nice to actually do almost um, a winter design. So that's what we're going to do today. So like I say, grab yourself that brew, that cheeky biscuit and let's have a play. One thing I want to point out is do remember when you're doing your cards, always I love to just add a little bit of stamping on the envelope. I think it just adds that extra detail, but also front and back look. But also I think if this is going in the post, you know, it gives the postman something to smile at when he's delivering the letters. A little tip though, I always use permanent ink on the envelopes. So I would use a VersaFine Clair only because if it's raining or it's icy and the envelope gets wet, your ink, it's permanent so it won't smudge. So that's my little tip for today. So I'll pop the envelope to one side. And this is the design we're going to do today. Quite a clean and simple design. Using a few tricks, you know I love the diagonal. And again, your eye reads in a Z, so your eye will always go across, down and across. So for me, this diagonal, it, it makes your brain happy. So for me, it's a lovely layout for a card. I'm going to pop that to one side and we're not using a great deal of um, products today, but sometimes I think, especially for an elegant, a stylish card, we don't want to overcook it, do we? Now, I did make a note of what this measurement was and I have completely forgotten it. It's seven by four and a half inches. So my base card is seven inches by four and a half. And we're going to start off just by stamping the lovely words. So I'm just going to get my copy of paper. And so this is the winter magic, these beautiful words. They're on my Lavinia block and I'm going to use Shady Lady. So I've just gone for a green theme. I noticed that recently a lot of my, my winter cards, as you've probably noticed, have been on a blue theme. So I thought we'll mix it up a bit and we'll, we'll go green. <laughs> so nice light tapping. And then I just want this near the top, but sort of as central as I can. And again, it's words, so let's try and get them straight. I say let's try and get them straight. I'm just covering myself if I don't. It's quite difficult because I don't want to put my head right on top of it to see because you'll get to see all the top of my head on camera. <laughs> and you don't want to see the top of my head. Mind you, if I put one, I suppose a lot of people see the top of my head, don't they? So again, although it's a sentiment, and so it's not a silhouette, um, we still want to give the ink time just to connect with that paper and just soak in. So let's just, and you see how well that stamps. I mean, it's just beautiful. And the words, you've got winter, you know, glitter, icicles, magic, wonderland, crystals, snow, frost, all those lovely words we associate. And then I'm going to use the red berry wreath stamp. Now that's quite a, hard to get my teeth around that. Now again, this, I did wonder about creating a wreath and stamping in the middle. And I thought, well, we've done that before. Let's mix it up a bit. So what we're going to do is come in with this. Now again, light tapping, and this is the larger one. There are two stamps on this set. And we're going to use the larger one first, still with the green ink. And I've just caught it here. So need to just get Mr. Inky Binky and wipe this. It still hasn't had a wash, by the way. I have promised him Christmas. Definitely he's going to have a wash. Now, again, I'm just going to move this down because I just want to... I don't want this bit to go over the wording. So I want to carefully position it there. And again, that's the beauty of these stamps being clear, that you can see exactly what you're stamping where. 
and I love this. It's such a delicate, almost wreath branch. So again, we'll lift that up. And yes, we've managed, look, we've avoided the, those there. And I'm quite happy we've got dots here. So these almost dots just add to that. Now I'm going to come in with the smaller one. Just for me, I don't like the way this ends here. And I don't want to stamp any more going round here. So what I'm going to do, and this is just personal to me. Just think if I come in with the smaller one. And I just sort of stamp this here. Now, before I stamp again, I'll just explain. So for me, I, I like this now, but I've almost got a gap there. So I'm going to come in and just stamp, if I can join that up there and stamp another one, there we go. So for me, I just find that makes a nicer shape for me. I'm, I'm happy with that. And as always, we'll give that a blot. You Versify and Claire, it's a slower drying ink. So it is worth always just remember to give it a blot. And I just think it's such a lovely shape, this, so elegant. And we're going to come in with a stencil. And when I was looking at my stencils, I wanted it almost like one that was sort of wintry. And all I kept thinking in my head was the holly and the ivy. So I got the ivy stencil. I don't know why, but my head was just holly and ivy. And what we're going to do is we'll do the top first. And just look for a nice place on your stencil. We'll go for that. And I'm going to use the Elements Ink Pad Bermuda. Now, I know quite a few um, of our new crafters, and it's always lovely to have new crafters. So, you know, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the stamping family. A lot of you have asked about Elements Ink Pads, and um, they are perfect for the gel press. Absolutely brilliant. But if you haven't got a gel press, don't think that's all you can use them for. I use them so much. They blend so well. And for me... The colours are different to what I've got in my oxide ink pads. The dye base, so I can do all the techniques I do with my others. But to me, these co these colours just complement and they go where I've got a little space in my others. So to me, I use them alongside as well as. They're such a great addition. Great for backgrounds, great for watercolour techniques. And here, I'm just going to use it through the stencil. Now, they are very, very juicy. They've got high pigment to less water. So I'm just going to get a little bit of ink on my stencil brush and dab it off on my mat. I always dab off on my mat. And these stencil brushes are just perfect for this. And I'm going to start in the corner because if I show you on the finished design, the corners are always deeper. And then we want the colour to lightly almost fade out coming into the writing. Because we don't want, if you think, if the colour was this deep, it would almost take something away from that writing. We still want to see the integrity of that beautiful stamp that Trace is drawn for us. So we're going to start here and then come paler. And we just need to be mindful of that. So when we start in the corner, so I've dabbed some ink off. And it's sort of a, a, a dab and a flick motion. I'm going to start in the corner and that'll be deeper. Now you could tape your stencil down. I've got to admit, I'm just holding mine. And I'm just gently flicking. Just want to pick a little bit more up. But go gently, gently. You know, the famous old saying, you can always add it, but you can't take it away. So gently, gently, I'm just going to move my hand as I come a little bit closer into my sentiment. If I want to see how it's doing, I lift it up. Oh, that looks nice. And let it drop down so you don't move it. It will just drop to the same place. Now I can tell I just need a tiny touch here and in the middle. I'm not going to re-ink. And remember, you will pick a little bit of ink up off your stencil as you're going. And there we go. I love that. So as you see, it's darker here and coming in lighter. So if we go to this corner now, and I'm just going to turn mine round because for me, the way my head works, it's easier for me to do darker coming lighter. 
Now I just want to angle it so it looks like it's almost growing at, a, at an angle there. So again, on my stencil, dab it off and then just start in the corner. And again, just gently, gently towards the sides. Now this, I will need a little bit more colour. We've got a larger area to fill to get to over here where our design is. So I'm mindful of that. Now I want to see how I'm doing. So let's lift it up. Right, so I can see I've got a gap here, haven't I? So that's the bit there. So I need a little bit more. I'm not going to ink up. I think I may have enough ink on my brush. You'd be amazed how these brushes, they really hold the ink, which is good because then you use less ink. And I'm sort of doing a bit of a circular motion, almost picking the ink up off the stencil. And that's nice, look, it's filled that space there. Just along the bottom, I just want the idea of the colour coming away. There we go. And I'm happy with that. I love the way, if I bring it a bit closer, can you see? It's deeper at the corner and it just almost fades away. Can you see it almost fades away to nothing? So I'm happy with that. Now again, I put the lid on my ink pad. And I'm just going to clean this up just with a, a wet cloth and then my inky binky. Just because if I don't, do you know what? I'll end up with it all over me and then I'll get marks on my card. And I want this to be a nice, clean and simple with white space. Now, you could leave it like that, but I want to add some snow. So for that, now you could use your white Posca, add some splats, we've done that before. You could use your acrylic paint, again, we've done that before. But we're going to use the chunky white embossing enamel, sometimes called chunky white embossing powder. Now this, if you look, it gives this almost enamel in, it's quite a tactile. What's lovely is we're building up layers. Although it's quite a simple classic design and we haven't used a lot of products, we have got layers on here. And that's what I love. Now, the only thing with this is you don't need a sticky ink pad, not like other embossing powders, but you do heat from underneath and you mustn't scorch the card. So what I'm going to do is sprinkle a little bit on here, heat from underneath, but obviously it won't be as easy to hear me while the heat tool's on. So I'll explain. I will have my heat tool on its highest setting. I will give it a minute to warm up first and I will heat from underneath and I hold the heat tool about here a couple of inches. So it's quite close. But what I will do is heat one area and you can see it melting. As it melts, you move to the next area. Just be mindful, sometimes when it's underneath, your hand's obviously under there, you suddenly think, oh, that's a bit warm. So again, just be mindful of that. Also, if you get too close, you will scorch your card. If it was me and you've never used this product before, I would practice on a spare piece of card. But honestly, once you get used to it, you'll fly, you'll love it. Now, I pop mine a little bit in the lid, just because A, I don't want to knock the whole pot over, but I find it easier to just take a pinch from here. Now I'm just going to put a little bit in this corner and then I'm going to come in and put a little bit in this corner. I don't want it over the words because again, I want to keep the integrity of those words. Once you put it on, look, you can move it around. So as I say, I'm gonna put my heat tool on now. You'll hear it warm up and then I'll come in and heat this and I'll try to show you as best as I can how it works. So mine's a two speed and I'm putting it on the highest speed. So it is noisy, I'm sorry. Just let it heat up. And then come in from underneath. And hopefully you can see that melting. So hopefully, you can see this bit here is melted. I just need to heat that bit there. 
There we go. So I'm now going to move my card round and heat this corner here. And I'm hoping you can see that. Oh, there we go. I'm hoping you could see that. It's quite difficult for me actually checking that you can see it. I'm too busy watching what's happening underneath. So can you see how it melts? And it just shows up. It's just another lovely way of adding texture. Now, sometimes you get a little bit of almost steam coming off and that's because you've got the moisture in your ink. Obviously, there's not a lot of water in these ink pads, so you don't get a lot. Um, and also your card will slightly warp just to start off with. But that's just, because of the heat, it will flatten. So what I would do then is tip this back in here. And obviously, these pots just last forever. You know what embossing powder is like. And for me, that is just such a lovely, lovely design. Now, I always give mine a bit of a tap in case there's the odd bit I've missed. Now, I would leave this to dry to get it really flat before matting and layering it. So what I will do is the little finishing trick is I've just added some liquid pearls. So we'll do that now. If I bring the finished design in, I have actually put a little bit of stenciling on the card blank itself. You know, I just like to extend that design. And I've added a little bit of the um, embossing powder as well, the chunky white, just so the whole thing flows. Now, with your liquid pearls, for me, I always just put a little dab, yeah, a little bit on my mat so I know it's working. But again, I'll wipe that up. Otherwise, you know what will happen? My hand will be straight in it. Now, I want to put these where the dots are but I almost want to offset them slightly because I don't want to cover the whole dot, if that makes sense. I almost want the dot to act as a shadow. So I'm just going to go along and add these. Now you could use gems if you wanted. If you want, you can put one in the middle of the snowflake there. And again, I think that just adds to the whole design. And I've kept, I've gone with a, um, a white opal. There's a gorgeous sort of platinum colour just to keep it all tone on tone and almost keep it quite classy. Now, if I bring my finished card in and what we'll do, now you could keep this white on white look but I just think if I add a little bit of green underneath as I say once the heat once this cools down it'll be lovely and flat and I can mat and layer that and I must admit I've just got myself a little bow that matches and I just think a little bow there again just be careful that you don't obliterate the words you still want to read those words. And there you can see it. You could keep the card plain if you wanted underneath or add that extra stencil work. I mean, really, it's like that. That's purely up to you. You know me, I like to give you choices, I like to give you ideas. I mean, I actually think a couple of little berries, little white berries here might look nice. Again, you know I get carried away with my embellishments. I love that bit, that those finishing off tricks. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I'd love to see this, you know, in different colour tones. I'm thinking our gorgeous confetti colour. Or uh, is it Della Blue? The, oh, you see, I'm going back to blue. I'm supposed to be going away from blue, aren't I? Anyway, there's lots of gorgeous elements ink pads, lots of different colours you could try. If you try, please tag me in. I always love to see what you do. So you take care. Have a good week and I'll see you again next week. Much love and hugs from me. Bye for now.